Hey, you talk on her video. Hey, her talking needs to my 30-year-old. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. It's early yet, you know? Well, comic Con's <laughs> just starting, yeah. so we all have energy. <laughs> <laughs> We're not like it? at the end of the day going <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and Sunday. You're like, I've heard all these questions. I've already done it. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and there's still Walking Dead to do yet. Oh, so. yeah. So. Yep. I'm going to try to make it to that. I'm going to try. <laughs> That's Sunday, right? Saturday. 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 Okay. Better get it right. I know. Okay. I know. He's going to show it's, up on Sunday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's written down. It's it's written down somewhere. <laughs> so, yes, why lore? Why not lore? I mean, you know, when, when you realize that something as innovative as Aaron Mankey's lore podcast exists, um, and you're as fascinated with horror and non-fiction history as I am, um, it is the perfect marriage. Uh, these are character-driven stories that provide context that we don't normally get when examining myths and folklore. I mean, where did these stories come from? Where did where did the vampire myth come from? Where did the werewolf myth come from? Um, you know, I, I've never seen or up until lore heard anything like it. So with that being said, I'm this whole since you're a big horror fan, and I am as well, what's your favorite horror movie? Oh gosh. Or which I one would, like scares I, I would the say, crap out of you? I would say um Alien. Ooh. Alien scares me. Yeah. Really yeah, that's. One. I think it's one of the reasons why when Jim and I worked together, we made it a combat film, and it's still scary. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to war, and right. it's like, yeah, a Alien still scares me. It's definitely one of my favorites too. Were there any mythologies that you were specifically excited to bring to life from the podcast? Well, you know, you'll notice there isn't a zombie one, so it was nice. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice to, to get a little bit away from zombies, although I'm sure hopefully if we get future seasons we can do that. Um, I I love the idea, the fascinating idea that there that there was an element of of uh, <laughs> something that happened in America that led to a vampire myth. I did not know anything about that uh, and they made a tonic so I'm not sure if that's something that you've seen. Uh, that to me was so freaky and I don't want to give away the punchline for people who haven't seen it but uh, but it, there's a very interesting -dum -bum at the end of the episode that brings it all together. How was it like working on like an anthology show versus like a Walking Dead where it's like an established world and then you kind of stay within that world where it's like... You know what? It, one, it was incredibly exciting. Yeah. It was wonderful, but it was damn hard. More work. Be because, you know, we shot these in between, I mean, the, the scripted elements, between two and four days. So, and we didn't have any downtime between them so the costume department the you know the construction department the set dressing department I mean two to four days and we're into a different century and different costumes and different set dressing and different props different you know prosthetic effects so I mean it really was as challenging as anything I've ever done if, if not the most challenging and then figuring out how to weave the very different elements together, the animation, the archival, um, Aaron's uh, narration and scripted together was challenging too. So many different media. So yes, different and, and if you've seen more than one episode, you'll see that they really do have a different style. Uh, Echoes is black and white, and we had very different approaches to the cinematography and um, and even even the color timing. Uh, and that's the exact opposite of what you do on a scripted series, where you want everything to look, you know, completely continuous. This is, you know, you want you want continuity of look. In this, you want each one to stand on its own. Um, you know, we, because we were embarking on what we think is a is a new format, uh, we wanted to have some that examined um, stories that everyone would be interested in, like one of the origins of a vampire myth, one of the origins of um, 
of werewolves, um, you know, sort of uh, poltergeist communicating with the other side. And then we wanted to throw some things in there that were completely out of the box, like, um, like you know, early treatments of mental illness. You know, I mean, one of the most frightening episodes is, I mean, the idea that, you know, an ice pick lobotomy, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Now, I don't know if you were given that episode to look at, but you'll also find that it's shot in black and white. Oh, I love it. I'm looking for, I used to work in a psych hospital. <gasps> so, yeah, I'm from, I'm from Atlanta. I okay. used to work, work, work in one, and so we've come a long way from that. <laughs> to now, nice restraints and but you'll, you'll that find help, but really still. interesting things that we've all heard the the word you know in the uh, bedlam, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it was actually an old mental hospital in England. Uh, so you you know what I, that's the other thing I love that you actually learn facts in this that you didn't know and you you learn how people can take things and misinterpret them mm -hmm. yeah. and that lives hang in the balance, you know? Yeah, that's what was great about um, watching the first episode and learning the actual meaning behind Saved by the Bell. Being yes. buried with the yes. string attached to the bell. It was yes. just, I was like, oh my god, I can't believe it. Can you imagine being that's... buried alive? <laughs> oh god. Was there something that you yourself did learn? Well, oh, I mean, so much. I mean, watching, listening to, to Aaron's podcast and then some of the things that we augmented from his mm -hmm. podcast, you know, you think you know, um, and it turns out you don't. Um, you know, I the, just the idea of the different sources that Bram Stoker uh, you know, took from to, to create Dracula is something that, that blew my mind. Absolutely blew my mind. So, so do you listen to any other podcasts? Um, I've listened to Serial. Okay. Um, I've listened to Homecoming. Um, and then I listen to books on tape. <laughs> That's the consensus. Apparently right? we all do. Really? <laughs> I mean, it's the only thing that keeps me from road rage in Los Angeles. Exactly. <laughs> it's not yeah, any it different used to in be, Boston. It used to be NPR, but now the news is so is so disheartening. I can't right. listen to it anymore. You need escapism. Yes. Right. Yes. Is there a favorite aside from the, pod, the podcast and books on tape? Is there something that you really like? Because you delve. I mean, your whole career, you have all these kind of really dark and heavy, wonderful things, which I love that. But I get it. Like, is there something you have to do? Is there a favorite thing that you like to do to make it lighter and decompress from that? I read nonfiction historical books, um, and I make documentaries. So uh, I've got a documentary that. Um, is being shown around the country in film festivals called Man Killer, which is about the first woman to be elected principal chief of the Cherokee Nation, which also gives you an idea of how far advanced uh, Native American cultures that we somehow think are backwards. I think we may be the backwards cultures, and we're just not aware of these stories. So it's it's a really important story of a of a wonderful woman who sadly passed away in 2010. Um, but it's an empowering story, and whenever I feel defeated, I remember all of the things that she overcame in her life, um, and and get renewed hope and you know the ability to say you know what if she could do it I could do it. Right. I was wondering if you've done a lot of horror fiction and now you're dealing with horror that has to do with the effects. How does that affect you? Oh, I think it's, it's far more frightening. It's, it's far more frightening realizing that, you know, a woman who was clearly a successful woman who perhaps were, was a little too ahead of her time and culture could have been thought to have been taken over uh, and was such a threat that she was killed. Um, and, uh, you know, I think we're seeing such fear in the world right now that lead people to do things that, if they weren't so fearful, 
they wouldn't do. And uh, you know, and, and so you just have to pick up a newspaper and turn on the TV today to realize that we probably haven't come that far. And we need to be aware and think about, you know, historical incidents um, that we should have learned from a long time ago.